Hi, we're going to talk about the words spontaneous and non-spontaneous. Uh, in AP, if you are in an AP class, you also might see the word, well, if you're in AP, you'll definitely see the term thermodynamically favorable. Um, I'd say older textbooks, 100%, you're going to see the word spontaneous. Newer books, you might see them gravitating towards this term, the thermodynamically favorable. Same thing, okay, same thing. They mean the same thing. You could use those interchangeably, 100%. Um, now, here's what spontaneous means, and I'm going to use the word spontaneous, um, but when I use it, you'll know that I'm also referring to thermodynamically favorable. Um, a spontaneous uh, occurrence. This is going to be changes that occur only in the direction that leads to equilibrium. So, naturally, uh, things will always go to equilibrium, okay? That's a spontaneous occurrence. Water running down a hill. We don't have to pump the water and force it to go down the hill. It does it by itself. That would be spontaneous because it's going toward equilibrium. We'll, we'll run into a lake and we'll reach equilibrium at that lake. Um, let's see, another way to look at it, spontaneous is any physical or chemical change that once begun occurs with no outside intervention. So I'm going to use that example again of water running down a hill. Once um, the raindrop hits the mountain, um, and it begins to roll down the hill, again, we don't push it. I don't have to do anything to make water run down a mountain. It will do it by itself. Or I could set a, a boulder at the top of the mountain and that will run down the mountain by itself. I don't have to put energy into it. It does it by itself. Um, so two ways to look at spontaneity, spontaneous. Um, now, of course, the antithesis to this is non-spontaneous. Uh, so let me write this down. So if something requires energy, um, here's a good one. I want to put a boulder from the bottom of the mountain to the top of the mountain. That's going to take energy. That would be non-spontaneous because I've got to put energy into that and lug it up the mountain. So non-spontaneous would be the opposite. Spontaneous. Um, and the opposite, instead of saying thermodynamically favorable, is we would say thermodynamically unfavorable. Let's write that down. Thermodynamically. I'm chuckling because this is such a mouthful. It's like, hmm, spontaneous. That might be difficult for students. What should we rename it? Thermodynamically favorable. Thermodynamically favor favorable. Nine syllables. Spontaneous. Four. Let's double the syllables. Sorry. <laughs> Mini rant right there. Thermodynamically unfavorable. I'm sure there was a great collegiate reason for changing it from spontaneous to thermodynamically favorable. Um, so here would be the antithesis, okay? There's the opposite, when you have to put energy into something to make it do what you want it to do. Um, now, we're going to look at signs for spontaneous and non-spontaneous. And again, that could be um, favorable, unfavorable. Um, here we have it, delta G. Negative delta G means it's spontaneous. Positive delta G means it's non-spontaneous. I'm being really specific to Gibbs free energy. Um, a negative delta, uh, delta G, it means that energy is available to do work. Woohoo! We like that, especially as engineers. We love systems that have energy available to do work because we'll jump in, harvest that energy, and transfer it somewhere else to usually make money or benefit mankind. Um, positive delta G, not spontaneous, this means if you want that reaction to happen, you've got to put something in it. You've got to put some energy into it. I want these lights to work, I have to put electricity into it. That's going to be non-spontaneous. We've got to put energy into it. Um, notice delta H. Same, same, negative and negative for delta G and delta H are spontaneous. Um, so similar. Delta H is spontaneous. And remember that negative delta H uh, indicates uh, exothermic, that the net reaction releases energy, releases energy. A positive delta H is non-spontaneous, and of course, positive delta H, you remember, is endothermic, where this requires energy. Uh, so we need to put energy into the system in order for that reaction to occur. Um, so I purposefully put delta G and delta H on this side, so it would help you remember they have the similar signs. Negative delta G, ne negative delta H, spontaneous. Positive delta G, positive delta H, non-spontaneous. Now here's the odd man out. The one that's opposite signs is entropy, delta S. Positive delta S is spontaneous. Now, entropy, again, this is a measure of disorder. So spontaneously, what happens? 
items go from disorder to, excuse me, from order to disorder. I'm thinking about vacuuming my carpet. Um, naturally, somehow my carpet gets dirty. So I have to put energy into it to make it become ordered again and get all those nice lines in the carpet. Um, so positive, spontaneous, um, our positive delta S means you're going from something organized to something disorganized. And that naturally happens, like pipe, a pipe rusting, happens all by itself. It becomes disorganized. Look at ships at the bottom of the ocean. Nobody plugged that ship in to make it rust and decay. By itself, it fell apart and become, became disordered. Now the opposite, negative delta S, that's the non-spontaneous. And that's when we take a mess, disorder, and we organize it into order. This would be like going from a liquid, so think about water where the uh, molecules are translating and moving, and making it organized into a solid with a fixed position, with a fixed volume. Um, that becomes more organized. It requires energy. It requires energy. Um, so disorder to order, becoming more organized. Cleaning your room, you've got to put energy into it to make it organized. That's non-spontaneous. Anything that takes energy is going to be non-spontaneous. Anything that releases energy will be spontaneous. So becoming more disorganized, more uh, from order to disorder, releases energy from disorder to order. Man, you got to put energy into it to make it more organized. So be really careful on that. These signs are opposite of delta G and delta H. Spontaneous for delta G, delta H, negative. Spontaneous for delta S, positive. Be careful. Now, I wanted to show you why, the why behind this. So um, I did just a little equation for you. The change in entropy. So we always do final minus initial. So final minus initial. And remember, S is a measure of entropy. So if I have more entropy, more disorder at the final, okay, than what I did at the beginning. So at the beginning, I have just a little disorder. It's much more organized. This will be a bigger number. So notice the final entropy is greater than the initial entropy. The disorder final is greater than the disorder I began with. Then if this number is bigger than that number, you end up with a positive delta S. So I just wanted to give you the reason why it's opposite, what I call the odd man out. And another way that I remember this entropy to me is kind of a strange word. Um, and so that gets the positive. It's different from our delta G and our delta H. Just make that demarcation in your brain to keep those, those uh, signs straight for spontaneous and non-spontaneous, thermodynamically favorable, um, thermodynamically unfavorable. All right, if you have other questions um, on any of this, look under the thermodynamic playlist. Thanks so much and have a really good day.